Hi, this is Marty with Skincare Science, and welcome back for another video. In this Hi, video, this what Marty, I'm going to talk about and welcome back is for another uh, video four cleansers. And I'm going to change uh, things up in a little bit. Serene, and we're going to talk uh, about uh, skincare, skincare science. Uh, Serene is the brand, and the four products uh, that we're going to talk about, and there are there are only four cleansers uh, within the line. Uh, they are the AHA three facial cleanser, AHA twelve facial cleanser, uh, facial cleanser sensitive skin, and salicylic acid cleanser. I'm going to go over each one and I'm going to talk about the Fitzpatrick scale, make this really simple. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the hair follicle and the uh, stratum corneum. And these is, this is the three layers of the skin or two, which is the uh, stratum corneum, SC, the epidermis and the dermis. So let's get started right away and talk about what's most important when looking at any cleanser um, and especially those within the uh, skincare science brand line Serene. The AHA3 facial cleanser, uh, the active ingredient, and that's what's important with when you're looking at any any uh, any any product, any cleanser whatsoever, is uh, what is the active ingredient and what is it doing? Well, the active ingredient in AHA3 facial cleanser is AHA, AHA or glycolic acid at three three percent. Okay, so going further down, we have AHA12. That's going to be the same. AHA at 12%. Facial cleanser sensitive skin does not have any glycolic acid in it whatsoever. And for the reason for facial cleanser sensitive skin and the reason why I put the word sensitive skin is just to alert the professional uh, and or you as the user that you're not using a cleanser with uh, an active ingredient um, other than soap. So I'm going to go ahead and write soap here. And then on the salicylic acid cleanser, um, oh, and by the way, on the soap, there are two types. And I'll go over those in a second. Their name's not important, but I'll tell you what's in it. The salicylic acid cleanser, which is um, B, H, A, 2%. Okay? Now, the next thing that you want to pay attention to, uh, and only for the ones that have an acid in it, is the P. H. And the reason why that's critical and extremely important is because water does not inactivate an acid. It basically dilutes it, okay? But it's the pH that's really important. So the pH of, uh, oh, by the way, just so you have an understanding, if a pH of a liquid with an acid in it, as it relates to glycolic acid, the pK value is what it's called, pK value is 3.8. So the liquid must have a pH range of less than 3.8. Okay, So the pH is 3.3 to 3.6. Same, same, same. But this is 5.0 to 5.5, which is basically the pH of the skin. The pH of the skin's biofilm natural is, a bit, um, is uh, acidic. Okay, and it's acidic to kill bacteria, and that's a whole other study, a whole other thing. But this is the most important thing, is when you consider what the active is and what you're trying to do with the cleanser, you got to know what the pH is as well. All right, now, do these products here, this one here, this one, and contain soap? Yes, they do. But you really don't, basically all you want to do is look at soap as this. You have the top of the skin, right, the SC, and you have basically dirt. Okay, let's just whatever, throughout the day, whatever, okay? Well, basically what you need is you need soap to be able to encapsulate and lift and separate the oils of the skin so that it can wash away. That's all the soap really does, okay? So the important thing is to remember is, are we cleansing the skin with soap? Well, we are, but that's not really the main objective. The main objective is to administer the glycolic acid or the salicylic acid because as we cleanse, we want not just the removal of, of surface um, uh, contaminants, you know, whatever dirt, whatever is going on with, for the, with the day, but um, we want to be able to actually do something when we are working with cleansing to improve the skin. Uh, right up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the Fitzpatrick scale, okay? And we all know, as professionals, it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to group these 
together as one, two, and three. Now, if you don't know the small scale, which is one, two, and three, as I, as I teach and educate on it, uh, go ahead and look, there's a video there. Uh, but basically what it is, is, is I'm a two, basically. I tan well, uh, gray, brown hair, you know, dark eyebrows, uh, hazel eyes, I tan, do anything to my skin, it's gonna come back fine. Uh, number one would be um, uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, it doesn't tan very well. And then five and six is dark skin types, African American, uh, why would you need to tan, things like that. So we have number one and number three are the what we're concerned most about, and number two is do whatever you want, it comes back clean. Okay, all right, so AHA3 facial cleanser, um, that can be applied to all, one, two, and three. AHA12, no, it cannot be. Facial cleanser sensitive skin can be applied to all three on the small scale. Salicylic acid cleanser also can be applied to all three. There is a way to make any of these products less in strength. And basically how that, how that goes is this. If I have dry face, dry hands, and I put the cleansers, any of them, in my palm of my hand and lather together with very little water and I put it on my face, that is as strong as it's gonna get, okay? So keeping that in mind, as it relates to AHA3 and facial cleanser sensitive skin, I'm gonna do a little trick here for you, okay? And we're gonna do this as in strength, strong, okay? And then we're gonna do uh, weak, okay? So if this is AHA3, at dry face, dry hands, okay? And this is zero. And what zero means is I have put so much water inside of the AHA3 facial cleanser on my face, on my hands, that I've diluted the acid and raised the pH with the addition of the water to above 3.8. You're basically de diluting AHA3 facial cleanser to facial cleanser sensitive skin. Do you see how that works to zero? And this is zero acid, right? So this is facial, this is abbreviation for facial cleanser sensitive skin. You see how that works? To zero strength. So you can actually take AHA3, start with it at 10, and go all the way by the addition of water to where there's no difference between facial cleanser sensitive skin and AHA3 at this point and going forward. Now, be, remember I mentioned there's two soaps. Well, in facial cleanser sensitive skin, the soap, there's two different ones. One is sensitive, okay, and one is non-sensitive. And it's not, and the percentage of soap is not higher than 10, 11%. And the reason that is is because clinical studies, clinical trials said, wait a minute, it's not the soap that's being used, it's the percentage of soap that's being used in the liquid that's causing all of the problems to the stratum corneum or increasing transepidermal water loss, affecting the barrier function. That comes with the percentage of soap in the liquid. And they found that 10, 11% was the maximum threshold for what you could add to a liquid as it related to surfactants to not start to really cause trauma to the skin and or the barrier function, okay? But you can still keep going with facial cleanser sensitive skin from here, strong, right? No um, dry hands, dry face, full effect of the soap, all the way to the weakest thing you can possibly go to in the serene line, which is facial cleanser sensitive skin with a massive amount of dilution, okay? Little product, a ton of water. Oh, and all these products go a very, very long way, all right? So let's take uh, AHA 12 facial cleanser, talk about that. Okay, this product is no joke, okay? Uh, it is extremely strong. It should never be prescribed, uh, depending on the Fitzpatrick skill, one, two, or three, really. And I would say once a week on the one, and there would be no other glycolic acid in their home care, okay? And they would not need peels. And the same thing with the three, and on the two, uh, this is, again, probably the only, because it's 12% at a very, because it's 12% glycolic acid at a 3.3 to 3.6, I would not be including other acids at home. And the reason why that is, is because of its strength, and also, too, you have to 
assume that the client's not going to pay attention. And that product, if used morning and evening, okay, and that's the key, morning and evening, and I would only prescribe it at night because it is so strong, you're going to want to make sure that they don't go out on their own and go off the reservation and start doing it whenever they want. They will seriously harm their skin. Uh, an example, uh, a woman or a man comes in and they, get, they want to uh, reduce hyperpigmentation. Okay? You prescribe AHA-12 and tell them this is how you're going to use this because you know that once or twice a week is enough exfoliation. You're going to do it only in the evening and, 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 and remember glycolic acid is time dependent. I'll go over that in a second. The AHA-12 is only supposed to be, be used twice a week. If you do not follow my instructions, you are going to thin the SC to a point where you have no protection from the sun and the actual help that we were trying to give it by a circular, by increasing exfoliation through the use of a very strong cleanser, you're going to strip the SC from the skin, thin it to the point where the skin cannot build it fast enough, okay? And hyperpigmentation is going to come in like you can't believe. So you see how that's possible and how that can work? All right. So what I want to talk about now is time dependent and cleansing with these products. And then I'll finish with salicylic acid. What is really important to remember with any cleanser that contains glycolic acid is it's time dependent. So if you're washing your face and you leave it on, the longer the acid or the cleanser before you wash it completely off sits in your skin or on your skin, the more effect the glycolic acid is going to have. So you can definitely see if I prescribe 3 versus 12 and I tell someone with AHA3, I want you to use that for one to two minutes versus, or three minutes while you're scrubbing. Don't worry about it, but three minutes, two to three minutes is when then you should be washing off versus AHA12, two to three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, massive, massive difference, huge difference, okay? Especially when you consider dry hands, dry face as you try to make the product uh, weaker with the addition of water, okay? So let me finish with uh, salicylic acid and how it works on the skin. 2% uh, BHA, uh, beta hydroxy acid, is the most that I can put uh, by law in a cleanser. Uh, that would be 2%, okay? With the pH at a 3.3 to 3.6, it is a very effective cleanser. It's a standard within the skincare industry, very basic product. And the reason why salicylic acid is such a great a uh, uh, cleanser for acne patients, and, and I'll get into that in one second as it relates to what skin types. Um, the salicylic acid cleanser, basically, because of the small molecular size, so let's say glycolic acid, just for argument, is like that, the molecular size of the acid, okay? Salicylic acid is like that, okay? Now, when you look at a hair follicle, the uh, stratum corneum goes into the hair follicle, right? And the hair actually acts as a wick. So what you have is you have sebaceous glands here, there, and oh, a little, little side note on Accutane. If you don't know what Accutane does, Accutane shrinks the sebaceous glands. So before taking Accutane, that's what they look like. This is what it looks like after you take Accutane. Oh, and they never come back. <laughs> okay, so that's a critical debate within skin care, within acne treatment, but this is what they look like afterward. Okay, all right. So basically what happens is if, this, if the corneocyte cells do not exfoliate properly, okay, inside here, and the oil production in normal skin and the hair and, the, and used as a wick, like in a burning candle, isn't powerful and or free enough to move the corneocytes up and out, they create a plug. And that is the formation of your acne, plus the bacteria and everything else. There's a few factors that go in uh, with producing real acne. So salicylic acid is able to go inside that hair follicle and work on loosening up the, uh, uh, the desmosomes and the um, binding that keeps those corneocytes together, not the bricks, but the mortar that's actually holding the skin together. Um, 
So that's in the brick and mortar philosophy of how the skin uh, is built, okay? So with that said, that's why silicic acid should always be used for acne. And also too, uh, because it's at 2% and 3 these are interchangeable. They're both acids. One is just more specifically geared for acne and has basically gotten the name of an acne treatment cleanser. But you can really use AHA3 and cell cell cleanser interchangeably. If you have a favorite, you go with it. Oily skin types, absolutely go with the salicylic acid cleanser. All right. Um, so that discusses each, each one of the cleansers. And I think the last thing I probably need to talk about is who I would prescribe and what and my go-to. Okay. So my go-to is always first facial cleanser sensitive skin. The reason why is because it's a cleanser done twice a day and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any actives in it other than cleansing. It only has one function, that's to cleanse the skin. What that does is it gives me flexibility with the addition of higher strength glycolics and or with the Fitzpatrick one, two, or three on the small scale for flexibility. You see, if you have AHA3 or AHA12 or salicylic acid as your cleanser, and, and by the way, there are other products that I bring glycolic and salicylic, so it's very easy, and, and it, it would be very possible for Serene to only have one cleanser, and it would be this one. But in the industry, that wouldn't work very well. I would get laughed at. It's like not having a, uh, a sunscreen in your line where I only have one. I would get laughed at, and it just wouldn't go over very well. So. If I prescribe facial cleanser sensitive skin over another cleanser with acid, I don't have to deal with this education here. You see how that works? So there's a lot of flexibility and you basically just have to learn through your own, what do I like to do? What do I want to do? What do I feel comfortable teaching my clients? Do you want to teach your clients this? Because you're going to have to if you prescribe AHA3 or salicylic acid cleanser. Because there's going to be times where you are going to want the client to not purchase another product, but you're going to want them to retard or reduce the amount of acid in their home care. Okay, so what that might look like is like this. Acid on, acid off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And through that, how do you turn the acid off? by diluting it and making the product weaker, okay? It's very easy to hand someone on the Fitzpatrick scale three or four or two on the small scale, look, criticize them. Here's your cleanser, AM and PM and be done with it. But this is real skincare and, and what you are doing is you're actually impacting the skin in a clinical way. This is no joke, <laughs> okay? And here's the best part. Once you learn the basics of what I've taught here with regards to what the active is and what the pH is, and I would like to add this, if there is anything other than an acid, any botanical, any vitamin A or, or Bs or, or any, anything, the soap is going to eradicate it all. Um, to have anything other than an acid in a cleanser other than soap is an absolute waste of time. I'm sorry to say, but you cannot cleanse the skin and fight anti-aging at the same time. And that's one of the founding principles of skincare science and Serene, the skincare line. Uh, one purpose, one result, beautiful skin. What's the purpose of the product? What is it supposed to do? Skin to product, product to skin, okay? Taking the skin and with the treatment and what I'm trying to do, I have acne, salicylic cleanser, anti-aging, hyperpigmentation, what is the nighttime regimen going to be? Facial cleanser sensitive skin and or they're on a budget that I'm going to go with AHA3 facial cleanser and or they're a Fitzpatrick 342 on the small scale and they're, and, and, and they're in their late 20s, early 30s and they can't afford chemical peels. I'm going to go with facial cleanser sensitive skin and AHA12 facial, AHA12 facial cleanser. And the reason that is, is because daily is going to be your facial cleanser sensitive skin and then the HA12 is going to be the at-home regenerating cycle. And if you don't know what a regenerating cycle is, um, I think I have a video on that where you can look at that. But in closing, this is clinical. You are affecting the skin and you will make a difference. It's just a matter of kind of undoing maybe thoughts that you have about criticizing. Because if you come from the, from the school of you were taught to kit a size by a skincare line, this is gonna be very difficult for you because you're looking for me to tell you what to do and that's product to skin. What Fitzpatrick are they? What's on the back of the box? Fitz one, two, 
do this, if it's two, three, four, do this, and you get the point. This is completely opposite of that, okay? And this is a lot more powerful, a lot more effective. It just takes a little bit more time to understand so that you can have success with it. And once you realize this, you'll never go back to the other way. Criticizing in that way of administering skincare and being a professional esthetician and or at home, just, you know, anybody watching this video, you'll never go back the other way. This is Marty with Skincare Science, and we'll see you in the next video.